Hey, we're here with Mark Dujinski, author of The Bandsaw Handbook, New Complete Guide to the Bandsaw. And I had a couple questions about this old bandsaw mill blade that Bob Rush has acquired for the Rib Lake Historical Society. Now, Mark, the first thing I notice is we've got teeth on both sides of the blade, but we have two different profiles. What is up with that? Okay, this is from a large... Um, bandsaw, and in Wisconsin, McDonald uh, sawmills were manufactured starting in 1888, and they made saws from 54 inches in diameter to, to 8 feet in diameter, and I think you said that this blade was uh, about 50 feet, and that would probably be typical of a large mill. Right. In this particular situation, this is the sawing side, and if you look at this teeth, these teeth, they're swaged or they're flattened out, which allows a wider cut than the actual blade. So there's a, a wider kerf. So there's less binding? Yes, than the width of the blade. So in this situation, this is the cutting side and this is the back side. So the log would be advanced past the blade and then it would be backed up, so to speak. Right. And if there are any splinters, rather than pulling the blade off the saw, this would act as a little bit of a, a cutting factor so that it would destroy any splinters so it wouldn't have a backward force on the blade. I think, about, I think about cuts where the saw is not all the way through the log yet. In other words, where you're still cutting some wane. I could see this really coming into play then. Well, exactly, exactly. Or if you'd have a branch that would get partially sawed off sure. and would be stuck or whatever. Right. And this one's got some uh, pounding marks here. And these were fairly soft blades. And if they would hit a thick knot or something like that, they could be bent. So there are usually marks from where they've been straightened out. And this one has some issues here. This looks like it started to crack. Like fatigue, metal fatigue? Metal fatigue, yeah. Okay. So uh, one final question. If you had to make a bunch of homemade knives for skinning mink, would this be good raw material to use? Yeah. I think what you'd have to do is you'd really have to test it. Uh -huh. Maybe if you could possibly find somebody that, that makes cutting knives or, or other utensils, uh, you could give them a piece. And, and find out. Um, it's, it's probably spring steel, wouldn't you say? Or? Well, yeah, it probably is. Uh -huh. and, and of course these days, um, in commercial mills, these would all be carved by teeth and everything would be sharpened mechanically, whereas in the old days, these were all sharpened with some sort of filing process right. and swaged by hand. So is it a special hammer for swage? Yeah. And there's no anvil behind it? You just use well, the rigidity they're, of the blade? They're, well, they're special tools. Okay. I mean, I've got a couple of old catalogs showing all the different tools that were used in sawmills. Well, neat. Well, thank you very much for asking, answering our questions.